So how are you guys this morning? You guys look good? You guys look good? Welcome. I want to welcome all you guys here at Livewire, and I want to welcome everybody who is joining us online, wherever you are, at home, at work, hopefully on your lunch break at work, or I guess it would be your breakfast break at work. Um, but wherever you are right now, we just want to thank you for joining us. Um, it's so awesome to see you guys. Um, it's been a good weekend. It's freezing. Um, so do everything that you can right now, drink hot chocolate, eat chili, um, get Starbucks, wear your boots because the weather probably will be gone within like two days, so absorb it while it's here. We don't get a lot of this cold weather in Florida or in Naples, so... Anyways, let's go ahead and let's pray before uh, we get into the announcements today. God, we just thank you so much for what you're doing uh, in our lives, God. We just thank you so much that, that you have your hand on us and that you love us so much that you see every detail of what we're going through and you see the deepest secrets of our heart and you know our struggles, even if we haven't shared them with a single person, God, you know what they are and you want to just untie those knots that are inside of our heart and you want to just um, make a way where there is no way and you want to do miracles in our lives and we just we give you our hearts today we give you our minds and our attention in your name we pray amen, amen. so we just thank you so much for being here this morning and don't have a whole lot of announcements this morning um, do want to remind you that we have a faith hope and love connection group that meets at Mercado every other Wednesday 7 o'clock just to do life together and hang out uh, so we invite you to come on out bring a friend um, it's a really awesome time it's led by Tony Perez so do that and um, yeah so we we're just so grateful you guys are here we've had an awesome weekend so far we got all of our Christmas we got a Christmas tree we got stockings we decorated the house and um, got Christmas cookies and it's been a really good weekend I hope all of you guys have had a chance to you know, do some Christmas stuff yourself. And I know it's a busy season, but don't forget to keep God as the priority, as the, the focus and um, the busyness. So um, again, thank you for being here. And with that, I just want to welcome Josh to come up with a really awesome message today. So welcome, Josh. All right. So good to see all of you. Good to have all of you here. Those of you that are joining us online, thank you so much for being with us. Um, I'm going to actually continue on a little bit of what we were talking about last week. And if you, if you weren't with us, definitely want to invite you to go to our website, livewirechurch.com, and, um, and see the, uh, you can get the message right on, uh, on our website. And so definitely want to invite you to, to do that um, because we're kind of, even though this isn't necessarily a part two, we're kind of going off of what we were talking about last week. The title of the message, you can see it behind me, To Live Is. To Live Is. And we asked this question Last time, we asked the question like, what do we live for? Who do we live for? What do we live for? And it's a, it's a question worth asking because sometimes, a lot of times, what we think we should live for, who we think we should live for, um, there should be, we think, you know, oh yeah, this is, this is what I should live for, who, who I should live for. And a lot of times it differs from what we actually should live for. And so um, uh, to live is, let's talk about that. And we're going to go back to Philippians chapter one, verse 21. You remember, again, if you were here last week, you remember me sharing this verse. This is the apostle Paul who wrote, uh, the book of Philippians. Actually, it's a letter to a city called Philippi at that time. And, um, and so Paul's writing this letter to a church that's there. And he says, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. He says to live is Christ and to die is gain. You know, interesting statement because, I mean, here's, here's the Apostle Paul and he's saying, okay, to live is Christ and then to die is gain. And, and what, a, what a statement, like to die is gain. Like, right, when you, when you read that for the first time and you just think, what, you know, I'm, if I die, I gain something. And we're going to come back to, to that portion of it. But the first thing I want to mention is notice that Paul says, for to me. Now, what about you? Like, what about me? Like, what about us? Because Paul, is a, Paul starts off and he says, for to me, hey. This is me. You have to decide whether this is you. And so in other words, Paul's saying, you got to make it personal. Like, I, I can't make you believe this, or I can't make this be something for you. Paul says, for to me, this is what's going on. For to me, this is what I believe. For to me, this is what I stand for. And so think about it, because he writes, for to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. And so we have to make it personal. The other thing I think of is, um, is for us uh, to, live, uh, to live as Christ and to die as gain. Like, is that something that we believe in? And, and, we'll, and we'll, again, we'll dissect this a little bit more. Or is it just the Christian thing? Like, 
you know, do Christians just walk around, oh yeah, you know, to live is Christ, to die is gain, I mean, and not really understanding, not really actually knowing what that even means, you know, so the way I look at it, and this is your first fill in the blank, a life without Christ is not real life, it's not real life. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that because when you look at life, yeah, and I'm not saying we can't be successful apart from God. We can't, you know, we can't have a life apart from God. Um, I'm not saying that um, life can't go well, but you've heard me say this many times before. We can have good, we can have great, but the very best life we cannot have without God. And so really when you think about it, it's like life is actually not truly life if it's apart from God because he's the creator of life. So in our world, if you think about it, in our society, in our culture, we've kind of, if you, if you really think about it, we've kind of made up the idea of, okay, here's what life is. Here's what life is about. Here's what life should be about. And if you think about it, it's, it's just been passed down from generation to generation. Oh, this is what life is about. This is what life is about. This is what, this is what is, is uh, you know, this is what life is truly, truly about. But if we really want to find out what life is about, if we really want to know what life is about, wouldn't we go to the inventor of life? Like, think about it. If you have a problem with your phone, okay, whether it's an iPhone, whether it's a Galaxy, or whether it's, you know, uh, if it's a, a tablet, if it's an iPad, whatever it might be, and if there's something that is wrong with that iPad, like if there was something wrong with my iPad, I'm taking it back to the inventor. I'm taking it back to the manufacturer. I'm taking it back to where I bought it from because they're going to know exactly how this thing is supposed to work and they're going to figure out what is the problem with my iPad. They're going to figure out what's going on with it. And so I'm going to take it back to them because essentially they're like the inventors of it or they're the ones that are responsible for it. I, I mean, I could figure out some things with, with the iPad, but there's some things that I can't figure out. There are some things that if it's not working the way that I think it should or the way that it's supposed to, um, then I've got to take it back to the inventor. Think about that as it relates to life. God created life. And the inventor of life knows exactly how life is supposed to work. And here's the, here's the awesome thing about that, is that the inventor of life did not design life so that it would be hell for us on this earth. He designed life to be a blessing. He designed life to be, for us to be prosperous and successful. For us to enjoy life and to live it to the fullest. And so there again, that's why I make the statement that a life without Christ, and again, we're going to dissect this a little bit more, a life without Christ is not real life. Now, another translation of that verse says this, Philippians 1.21. Uh, this is the New Living Translation, which is the one I kind of lean toward because it's more of a modern, a modern uh, version of the Bible. But it says, for to me, living means living for Christ and dying is even better. So he says to me, Paul, again, Paul's writing this and, and Paul's making it personal. He's saying, hey, you got to make it personal. I mean, it's up to you. What about you? Is for you is living Christ and die and dying to gain or is dying gain? So he says living means living for Christ and dying is even even better. You and I can live. We could stay alive. We can enjoy a lifetime without Jesus. But it won't be with it won't be what it could. Like we said a few a few moments ago. So let me ask us this. Living, um, and, and he writes here again, he says, living means living for Christ. What does that even mean? I think about that. What does living for Christ actually mean? And Paul, uh, the writer of Philippians here, Paul actually answers, if you will, this question that maybe we're even asking. He answers this question in what he writes above. Verse 9, notice this, uh, verses 9 through 11. <clears throat> He says, I pray that your love will overflow more and more and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. Notice what he says, for I want you to understand what really matters. In other words, Paul says, I want you to really understand what, you know, what really matters in life. He says, I pray that your love, it, it overflows more and more and that you keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. He goes on, he says, for I want you to understand what, what uh, really matters so that you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. May you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation, the righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ, for this will bring much glory and praise to God. Now, there's uh, several things that I want to hone in on, that I want to talk about that Paul actually references here. And again, we're talking about, okay, what does it mean to live for Christ? What does it mean to live for Christ? What does that look like? And Paul is answering this. The first one is, uh, if you're taking notes, if you're uh, uh, filling in the blanks, uh, spill over with love. 
All right. Notice he says, I pray that your love will overflow more and more. He says more and more. Have you ever have you ever been uh, uh, like filling up a cup in the kitchen? You got something on the TV and you're filling up that cup with the jug and then you're also watching something on TV. And then what happens eventually? It spills over. Right. So it's like you're pouring, you're pouring and then eventually it's like, whoa, whoa, you know, because you're you're distracted by whatever's on TV. And so it's, it's kind of that same idea. Paul says, let your love be like that. Just like you would fill up a glass and you accidentally spill it over or it overflows. He says, let your love be like that. Let, your, let love flow out of you. I don't know how many of you have ever watched the movie Pitch Perfect. All right, there's a girl on there that is, um, she's kind of, a, kind of the leader of, the, of a singing club. And, um, and in the beginning of the movie, she actually, when she gets anxious or she gets nervous or anxiety sets in, she throws up. And she throws up like throws up big time. So at uh, at uh, I think like three quarters away in the into the movie, there's like a scuffle between the girls going on, and and anxiety is just setting in, and she hurls. And I mean, you know, it's it's fake, obviously, but it's like I mean, it's like a it's like a um, what do you, <laughs> yeah, like a projectile. <laughs> But it's like the, um, uh, the, the fire hydrant, you know, when you open up a fire hydrant and the water just gushes out. I mean, it's just coming out of her. And I don't know why. I know it's gross. I know it's nasty. And I don't know why I thought about that this morning. But, uh, but I thought about it this morning. And that's what God is saying or, or Paul's writing here. He says, this is what your love needs to be. Let your love just overflow. Let it spew out of you. Let it just come out of you. Because honestly, think about this. Think about this. Honestly, think about this. In our world, in our culture, in our society, hatred overflows, does it not? I mean, there is so much hatred. People hate each other, and one group hates another group, and colors hate colors, races hate races, and all this, all this hatred. I mean, when are we going to have somebody that is overflowing with the love of God and that we're, we're spreading that uh, throughout the world, spreading that in our culture and in our city and, and all of that. And, and so there again, Paul says, spill over. The first thing he says, hey, you want to know what living for Christ is? Living for Christ is spilling over with love. All right, Romans uh, 12, 9 and 10, he writes this. He says, don't just pretend to love others, really love them. Hate what is wrong, hold tightly to what is good, love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. So Paul, again, Paul writes and he's writing to the, to the Romans and he says, don't just pretend. You know, and honestly, friends, seriously, there are a lot of Christians and even just a lot of people. There are a lot of people that just pretend they love. Unfortunately, there are a lot of husbands that pretend to love their wives, and there are a lot of wives that pretend to love their husbands, and there are a lot of parents that pretend to love their kids, you know, maybe kids that pretend to love their, their parents, and there's just a lot, a lot of pretending. And, and Paul says, hey, don't pretend. Let this love that God has showered upon you. We prayed, we prayed this just a few moments ago. That God loved the world when we were unlovable, when we were living in our sin, when we didn't want anything to do with God. When we say, God, I don't care about you. I want to live my own life. When we did all of that, God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son because he loved the world so much, even in our unlovable state. And I know that there are some unlovable people in our lives, every single one of us. We have, there are some people, friends, maybe family members, Maybe people that we've got to, you know, uh, go to school with or, or work with, whatever it might be. But the fact of the matter is, what if we were the bigger people? What if we were the bigger men, the bigger women, and we said, you know what? Regardless, I'm going to love that person. No matter how they treat me, no matter what they, what they say or what they do, I'm going to love that person even, even if they don't deserve it because I didn't deserve God's love. And God showers his love on me. So again, spill over with love. That's what it means to live for Christ. Again, we're talking about what does it mean to, to live for Christ? Because Paul writes, for to me, living means living for Christ. What does that mean? Spill over with love. Number two, 
Notice Paul says to keep on growing. All right, back to Philippians. And he writes in uh, the second half of verse 9, he says, And that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. Paul says, keep on growing. The writer of Hebrews writes this uh, in Hebrews 5.14. Solid food is for those who are mature, who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. So he, the, the writer of Hebrews says, solid food is for those who are, are mature. If you think about it, right? Solid food... When, uh, you know, I think some people need to get off the, uh, need to get off nursing and get off the Gerber food, right? Yeah. <laughs> some people need to get off Gerber baby food and, uh, and grow up, you know, and, uh, unfortunately there are some, you know, some adults that we know that just need to grow up. But, uh, the writer of Hebrews is saying solid food is for those who are mature. Like we expect of babies, right? We expect of babies to be nursing. We expect of babies to drink baby formula. We expect of babies to eat Gerber baby food. We expect that, right? But at some point, you know, I don't want my five-year-old or I don't want my 11-year-old or my 16-year-old still eating Gerber baby food. And I'm talking about <laughs> literally. I don't, want my, I don't want my son or my daughter to be eating, you know, like, baby for drinking baby formula because at some point they're going to eat they're going to eat regular food you know they're going to grow up and it's the same thing as far as spiritually when we talk about growing in knowledge and understanding and knowing between good and bad and right and wrong well we're we're talking about becoming more mature we're talking about growing up in in uh not only just in life but also in our in our walk with the lord so there again paul says hey keep on growing don't stop growing. Don't stop growing in knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Because when we're wise, when we have knowledge and we put understanding with that knowledge and we put wisdom with that, then guess what? We're going to make wise choices. We're going to make good choices. We're going to make good choices for our life. We're going to make wise choices for our life. So Paul says, keep on growing. What does it mean to live for Christ? It means to keep on growing. Then the last one, he says, to be productive. Uh, Notice, uh, let's see, verse 10. He says, for I want you to understand what really matters so that you may live a pure and blame, blameless lives until the day of Christ's return, until the day that Christ comes back. Verse 11, may you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation, the righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ. So Paul says, hey, be productive. You remember being kids and mom or dad would come up to, come up to us and say, hey, go do something productive, right? Because we were maybe doing something maybe foolish or... Uh, maybe, you know, just playing too many games or whatever it is. And they're just like, be productive. Go do something productive. Maybe clean up your room or do your homework or whatever it is. Well, Paul's saying kind of the same thing. Be productive. He says, you know, there's nothing wrong with the, the fun and games, but be productive. Let's, let's continue to grow. You, you might remember in Galatians, he writes in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. 23, he says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Because he was talking about fruit in the verse we just read about being the, uh, filled with the fruit of our salvation. And what that means is this. The Holy Spirit produces the, this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And that's, when you think about it, that's the character of God. And that's what God wants to produce in our lives. See, here's the thing, friends. God wants us to be the very best versions and to live out the very best version of ourselves that we can. And when you think about it, if, if, that, if that's possible, like if that's possible, why wouldn't we want that? Like why would we want to live a second rate version of ourselves or a third or a tenth rate version of ourselves? Why would we want like less? If we could have the best, why would we want less? And so this is what Paul's getting at. Paul's saying the reason why to live is Christ is because when we're living for Christ, we live out the absolute best version of ourselves. And every single one of us, we know this to a degree because every single one of us, we have our off days, don't we? Every single one of us, like we, we, you know, say something that we didn't intend to say. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's even just to ourselves or maybe it's to somebody else, you know, or maybe we're driving to work and we say it out loud and maybe it's something we didn't intend to say, but we, we have off days. Maybe we've done something, we do something and it's just like, you know, we know we shouldn't have done it. We, we know we shouldn't have uh, gone that route or whatever. Every single one of us have off days and, and, and we realize afterwards at least we should realize afterwards, like, wow, you know what? That, I shouldn't have said that, or I shouldn't have done that. 
And so on top of that, whether we think about this or not, we realize that that's actually not the very best way to live or that's not the very best things to say or to do because we know that we could live better. Like you and I, we could live better. And so this is all that Paul's saying. Paul's saying living means living for Christ or true life is found in Christ because that's where the very best version of ourselves or the very best life that we could live, that's where we're gonna find it is in Jesus Christ. And so if we want the best, we've got to give our lives to Christ to have the best, to enjoy the best, and to live the very best version of ourselves. So this is what Paul means when he says, hey, spill over with love. No matter how people treat you, no matter what they say behind your back, or maybe even say to your face, just spill over with love. Now, that doesn't mean being a doormat, all right? Let's, let's make sure that we, you know, we clarify that because that doesn't mean being a doormat and just letting people walk all over you. No, that's not what it means because Jesus while being humble, was also a man's man. Jesus got in people's faces, all right? Jesus was tough with people. So it doesn't mean being a doormat and just letting people do uh, whatever they want to do, but let's make sure that rather than leaning toward hatred, rather than leaning toward retaliation, rather than, than leaning toward, you know, just um, being mean or whatever it is, lean toward the side of love. Because friends, that's what our world needs. Our world needs a little more love. Our world needs a little more kindness. Our world needs, and it's, it's like all of the, the fruits that the Holy Spirit produces in our lives. Um, the world needs love, needs more joy, peace, some patience, more kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Our world needs it. I mean, just think of self-control, for example. I mean, what if we all exercise self-control? You know, what if, what if every person in the world did that? I mean, man, we wouldn't have a lot of the, the, the junk that we have in, in our world. And then the last thing that Paul says is this. He says, and dying is even better, okay? He says, living means living for Christ. And then he says, dying is even better. What does that mean? Well, Revelation 21.4, we'll close with this. Um, uh, John, actually one of Jesus' followers, writes this in Revelation 21.4. He says, he, God, will wipe away every tear from your eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. And the reason why John was saying that is because he was talking about when life is over here. And this is why Paul says, uh, uh, where was it? Paul says, and dying is even better. The reason why he writes and dying is even better, because when we die, if we've given our life to Jesus Christ, if when we die, we immediately are in heaven. We immediately are in the presence of God. And in God's presence, there's no more pain, there's no more suffering, there's no more hurt, there's no more tears. It's perfect, just like the way God created the world before mankind messed it up. And so this is why Paul says, and dying is even better. See, we can have the best life we could ever live on this earth, but then when we die, it's even better. Because there's no more sickness, like every, especially like this time of the year, you know, there's a little bit of sickness. Sometimes we get the, we get the sniffles and runny nose, cough. And, and so we still get, we, we still get sick and we go through stuff on, 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 in this life, right? We go through challenges. We go through situations where we're dealing with things. But when we step into heaven, when we die or Christ comes back and we, uh, we go to heaven, life then is perfect. And there is no, there, there's no more sickness, no more pain, no more suffering, um, any of those things. And so that's, this is why John writes and why Paul writes, hey, dying is even better. So a couple questions that I want us to think about. How does my view of living differ from God's? Like when you think about living, how does our view, my view, your view, how does our view differ from God's view? Um, what does it mean to spill over with love, keep on growing, and be productive as we were talking about these three things? Because to really live is Christ and to die is even better. Let's close up in a, in a word of prayer. God, I just thank you uh, so much for just this message that you've shared with us today and just what you're, just the, the words even that you're wanting to get across to us. God, personally, Lord, whatever it is that, uh, that we need to hear, 
God, that, um, that we would hear clearly whatever it is that you're saying to us, whether it's spilling over more with your love, whether it's to keep on growing, keep on growing in knowledge, understanding, and wisdom, especially as it relates to your word, whether it's being productive. God, maybe, maybe we're being a little foolish or leaning more toward on the foolish side, and, and you want us to be more productive. God, to just have the very best and live out the very best version of ourselves that we can live out, Lord. We ask, God, that you would help us with that. And so, Lord, I just thank you for this word that you've shared with us, this message that you've given us. And, Lord, we thank you for, again, this time that we've had uh, together. And, and, God, I pray that your word will ring clear in our ears as even as we leave this place and that we wouldn't have just heard something, but that we would do something with what we heard. We give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I want to thank all of you for, for being with us. We're going to go into our discussion time here at our house location and definitely want to invite those of you that are online, if you're in the Naples area, um, join us at our, uh, one of our house locations. Uh, you can go to our website, livewirechurch.com, and you can get all the information uh, there on our, on our website. Just click on lo locations. But we also want to thank all of you that have joined us online, 10 or so other people that have joined us online. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, if it's your first time at Livewire Church, whether here at our house location or um, at uh, online, um, definitely go to our website, livewirechurch.com. Click on All Access Sundays and want to invite you to fill out that connect card. And so this way uh, we can connect with you. And especially if you say, hey, Josh, you know what? I want to talk about or I want to know about taking my next step. Um, I don't know what that means. I don't know what that looks like. Definitely want to invite you to click on All Access Sundays. Fill Fill out that connect card, excuse me, fill out that connect card and um, we would love to connect with you. So thank you so much for being with us this morning. God bless you. Have an awesome week. We'll see you next Sunday. All right.